Hello, this is Dr. Shalini Advani, and I'm the school director of Pathway School in Noida. And hello, this is Karthik Malhotra. And of course, it is always a pleasure to have Dr. Shalini Advani join us on this exclusive cast. Dr. Advani, many thanks for joining us. It's a vulnerable time that we are living in. It's a difficult time for adults. It's a difficult time for old people. But I think it's a it's an extremely different situation for children. Do children really understand what is happening right now, especially the younger ones? And for those who do, what kind of a lasting impression do you think the present situation of the COVID-19 and the lockdowns that are happening are going to have on these young impressionable minds going forward? I think that there's no doubt that children understand. Um, I think around the country, we've seen children doing rhymes or doing drawings and on what they need to do to safeguard themselves. Generally, they have very successfully learned about the importance of hand washing and perforce they've had to learn about social isolation. So it's very much there in everybody's life. What is really important in these times of emergency, and this is one emergency, I remember as a child uh, living through a war time, which is another emergency. What is really important is how you get children to process that, to understand that this is an extraordinary time. If you give children agency, if you give them a sense that somehow being careful Uh, not touching their faces, not meeting other people, washing their hands. These are things that is important for them to do. It makes them feel that in some way they are not helpless victims, but they are contributing to a safeguarding environment. And I really think that that's a very important aspect of how you go ahead with doing it. There is, of course, all sorts of uh, other obvious things like keeping children occupied, keeping a sense of schedule, all of those things. But these are uh, various different strategies that need to be used to help them process. So ma'am, how important do you think technology plays a role in a situation like this? Of course, you talked about the the war era that uh, that many of us were fortunate enough to not see in our lifetimes. Uh, But how different is the situation today with access to information, access to technology, even amidst a lockdown? Do you think that in some way offsets the impact of social isolation for young children? Technology has in fact proved to be a huge blessing. Uh, And I say this with some inflection because generally we tell children to stay off too much technology. But at the moment, this is their route to connecting with friends, to connecting with their teachers, to keeping a sense of the normal Uh, schools are doing things like, you know, dance classes and activities, not just uh, academic areas. And uh, children are being able to see other children and to know that they're all in this together. So for this time, I think technology has been really, really useful. There There have been new features and new apps that have come into their lives, which may not have done so uh, earlier. Uh, I'm thinking of Microsoft Teams or Zoom or features like that, uh, which they have very quickly got used to as platforms of communication and of collaboration and togetherness. As for teachers, I think teachers are really the heroes of the moment because they're not people necessarily who were born with this capacity. They've had to adapt really quickly. At Pathways, we are constantly really uh, grateful for the amount of work our teachers are doing to adapt their teaching, to bring about different strategies, which will engage children, in many ways, engage children with parents. Families can, in fact, come together. Parents are sitting in on children's uh, learning time and feeling that they're understanding these things in a different way to what they would have done when children are in regular classrooms. So what are some of the tools, some of the technologies that you are using at Pathways and uh, and how do they translate to the overall development of a child? Not just the pure academics, the education, but also the overall development of a child as young as perhaps nursery and KG. 
For us, I think one of the important things at Pathways is to emphasize that um, online learning can't be different to other learning in that it is at best collaborative. So tools that promote collaboration have been really very important. So obvious ones like uh, collaborative writing on uh, Google, um, uh, on Google Docs, or working together on Google Slides collaboratively, uh, children sharing ideas on Flipgrid. Uh, these are the sorts of activities which have been enabled by technology. Zoom allows breakout rooms and breakout sessions where uh, small numbers of students can go in and do a discussion group maybe for 10 minutes and then come back to the main classroom. So these sorts of fe features have been used a lot. We've also uh, looked at online dance classes. Um, children have been composing music. Um, uh, oh, Fusion 360 has been used in uh, product design classes. Um, so yes, so there's been a lot uh, which has suddenly come in to the regular daily classroom practice. So in your opinion, do you think uh, this could be a new normal in the education disbursement system? Do you think technology-driven education, perhaps distance learning, are where we are headed as a society or could potentially head as a society and these tools might turn out to be a little more efficient and a little more accommodating than the classroom environment? I don't see that the regular classroom will, will disappear. I certainly hope not. Uh, because as I said, that human interaction is very integral to what good education needs to be. And I don't think that that will change. I do feel that, yes, uh, the whole online education market uh, right. is going to grow. Um, just like work from home is, I think, going to grow. For right. Our like you and uh, I are doing presently. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> but at a time like this, um, you're in a lockdown. There's a possibility there could be perhaps another lockdown. Um, children are totally restricted indoors. There's no park. There's no cycling. There's no sport. At a time like this, does it play games in the minds of the child also? And what can parents do to not let those mind games come in the way of the child's development? You know, this is an interesting question because one of the, the fears and the concerns of the adult world is that children are in fact withdrawing into their rooms and sitting in front of their laptops and screens. And for children, uh, adolescents in particular, this is their community. This is their world of friends. Often is a friend who they're not meeting face to face, That's right. but a friend that they're meeting on the screen. Right. And uh, so a lot of children have combat loneliness or separation. The fact that they live in big cities where it's not easy to go across to another person by meeting virtually online. This is the world that children do inhabit. And what this has done is it's allowed parents and adults to in some ways have an entry into that world and to work with children on that. Do you think, Dr. Advani, the reverse journey from technology to a physical classroom is perhaps going to be a little more difficult than the journey that the children have just taken from the classroom to the virtual world? Well, every time I drop into a virtual classroom, which I do every day, uh, listening in to what children and teachers are uh, engaged with. Uh, and I asked the children how they're getting on. They're all saying we can't wait to get back into school. I don't right. think that you can do away with that kind of the joys of that human communication. And I, I'm pretty sure that that is going to remain. I don't see that this is an irreversible trend that we've moved in the direction. And here's hoping that uh, children do get back to their classes as soon as the situation outside permits. Dr. Advani, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful cast. It's been an inspiration listening to some of the great words of advice, wisdom and experience that you shared with us today.